All right, new problem, but we are going to tackle it the same way. First, by reading the question sentence and letting that lead the way as we take in the information. So here it says, what is the average speed for the round trip? Okay, sounds good. So here it says again, we want the average speed, but something that we need to take into account, something we need to point out specifically is again, round trip. So, all right, sounds good, everybody. What does round trip mean? What does round trip mean, everybody? Does that mean from point A to point B? From point B to point A? What, is, what does round trip mean? Yeah, it means both. Round trip means that we are going from point A to B and then back to A. That's the whole round trip. Let me just mark this over here. Let's say we start at point A and this is point B. Round trip is going to point B and then back to point A. That is the round trip because you make a circle or you make a circular motion. It's rounded all the way back to itself. So how is that going to help us? Remember, keywords and context are way more important than these silly little numbers here. The keywords and context are way more important. We want average speed. One more time, pop quiz. Speed is most closely related to what DRT term? Which term are we talking about when we say speed? Yeah, that's rate. So what we want to do is we want to solve this formula right over here. D equals R times T. We want to solve it for the rate. But one thing that everyone, almost everybody forgets, you know, when they're refreshing and they're doing this again for, you know, after a while, is that we need the speed for the round trip. And to be consistent, what this means, my party people, what this means is we need the distance for the round trip and the time for the round trip trip that's what consistency is when it comes to setting up your formulas we have got to be consistent so everyone i noticed that it says hey the boat goes 30 miles downstream at 15 miles an hour then returns 30 miles upstream at 10 miles an hour so is it true that i'm just going to take a 30 and plug it in right here is that true just take 30 plug it in for distance no can't trick you? Okay, no worries. Yeah, no, that's not going to be it. Because remember, we're looking for the round trips distance. The distance from the upstream part to downstream, that's 30 miles, absolutely. But then to go from downstream back upstream, that is also 30 miles. Everyone, what is 30 plus 30? Because the round trip is going down and back. So 30 plus 30, yeah, that's going to be 60 miles. That is the round trip. Again, that's the distance for the round trip. Notice how they didn't say, notice how they didn't say the distance or the rate downstream or the rate upstream. No, it's the round trip. So we are going to take the total distance and the total time and solve with those values. So boom, we have the rate right there. Everyone, I don't see times given to me explicitly, but can we find the times? Are we able to do that? Absolutely. Let me just split it up like this. In part one of the trip, let me just use blue. In part one, it's 30 miles downstream at 15 miles per hour. So if I set up a formula, 30 miles, 15 miles per hour times time. Everyone divide both sides here by 15. How many times does 15 go into 30? Right, a nice clean two. So we'll cancel out on the right side, leaving us with time equals two hours for part one. So that's part one right there. Now let's take care of part two of the trip. Part two, the distance again was 30 miles and the rate was 10 miles per hour. If we divide both sides by 10, 30 divided by 10, my party people, is gonna be three. 
Exactly. So now the time taken to come back upstream is three hours. So what is that total time going to be, everybody? What is that total time going to be? Correct. Five hours. Because we had two hours to go downstream, three hours to come back upstream. So that is a total of five hours. Two plus three, that's going to be five. So we have five hours there. So now that we're here, everyone, do we finally, finally, finally have what we need to solve this for the round trips rate? Absolutely. We have what we need. We're good to go. So I'm going to finish the problem by dividing both sides by five here because I want to get the rate by itself. And this might be the easiest math we've seen today. 60 divided by five, that will be 12. And that's why our final answer is a rate being 12 miles per hour for the entire trip. That was our average speed for the entirety of the trip. Hopefully we're feeling pretty good about that. And if not, I hope we can pick up on some little things to learn here and there for sure. All right, here's our next one. The question clearly reads, again, ignore everything else. Straight for the question sentence, we see that it says, hey, what is the area? What is the area of this shape? What is its area? Sounds good. Boom. Now, as always, area is a hyper-specific geometry word. So what we're going to do is look for the shape that we're dealing with, and it says a circle. So because of that, we are going to move forward and say that we're looking for the area of a circle, which is pi multiplied by the radius squared. One more time, everybody. What does the R stand for? One more time. Yes, the R stands for radius. So what we are going to plug in is the radius. Everybody, is that what we're given or do we have to do a little bit more work to find the radius in this problem. Yeah, we're given that, it's right there. Radius of eight meters. So this one is on the much, much, much easier side because yeah, we're given the radius clearly as eight. So we can just plug in that eight immediately and we're good. A equals pi times eight squared. Eight squared, remember that's the same as eight times eight. And that's 64. So because of that, we can replace eight squared with 64. So we have pi times 64 or 64 pi. And there we are. Final answer is going to be 64 pi, answer choice C. So with that said, everybody, the formulas, they're very clear. It says, and like, let's go ahead and go through it one more time, especially for those of us that were feeling a little overwhelmed. The formula says pi times r squared. R stands for radius. And what you want to ask yourself is, am I given the radius or am I given something else? Everybody, because it was clearly stated that the radius is eight, booyah, we're good. Now let's go ahead and remind ourselves that there's a difference between the circumference and the area formulas. For circumference, just remember, let me just go ahead and write it here. Your circumference formulas are these, two pi r or pi times d. For the area, we have area equals pi r squared. So feel free to have those written down for yourself so that way we can keep practicing the right way Remember the formulas, knowing the formulas makes a huge difference, but memorizing the formulas isn't the only thing. It's not the only thing you should do. It's understanding the pieces of the formulas so you know what to plug in. So with that, let's go ahead and keep it going here. Let's move on to the next one and keep having ourselves a good time. 